Hello, my name is Yash Akhari and today I'll be giving a talk on introducing Hadamard binary neural networks. All right, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Yash Akhari and I'll be talking about, well, I'll be introducing Hadamard binary neural networks. Um, let's get started. So the contents of this talk will, will begin by understanding and trying to demystify parallel and distributed deep learning. Then I'll offer a solution for parallel uh, deep learning, which is binary neural networks. And I will work upon how I engineered it uh, slightly differently. And I'll talk about Hadamard binary neural networks, its performance, and its uh, performance benchmarking. Um, so let's get started. So um, I think it's important to address uh, the rise in distributed uh, deep learning. And as we can see, uh, as years progress, the number of reported, the percentage of uh, reported experiments in the field of AI, um, there's a consistent rise in the percentage of uh, experiments that actually report uh, using multiple nodes. And uh, we also see a rise in the number of experiments that uh, report using Intel MPI. And uh, that essentially indicates that uh, distributed training is on the rise. However, there are a few principal issues with this uh, methodology uh, that distributed deep learning. Uh, as the batch size increases, we observe a decrease in accuracy. Obviously, this happens after around 512, where the batch size increases about 512. And this uh, poses an issue in distributed deep learning because uh, when there are many nodes, we will have to inherently increase the batch size for training. And also, we observe that uh, layers such as fully connected and uh, convolutional layers, they scale non-linearly. Uh, but we want perfect scaling, uh, perfect uh, linear scaling for our applications. So uh, to do this, uh, the uh, binary neural networks is one way to go about it. Uh, what binary neural networks do is we take the weights and the activation matrices, and we take the mean of the absolute value, and we multiply that with the sine function of that matrix. So if you can see here um, that the out three, line three, is actually a random matrix, which will be your weights or activations. And it has been binarized in out, uh, output line four. So once we do this, we can actually remove the full precision number, which in this case is 0 0.474. And we have a binary matrix, which only has two values, plus one and minus one. Uh, we can cast the minus ones into a zero, and we can bit pack it into available data types, 32-bit data type, 16-bit data type. And then we can use bit manipulations to do the forward pass instead of uh, uh, you know, FMA operations. And this actually speeds up uh, the inference significantly. So we can benefit a lot in terms of uh, you know, the amount of memory access because this is significantly reduced here. Um, however, this, has, this actually has a problem that um, matrices in, uh, on typical neural networks are of the order of 4096 by 4096 or even larger. And once we uh, binarize it in such a destructive fashion, we lose out on a lot of the accuracy, which is uh, quite important. And that is, that is the end game, actually. So how can we increase the capacity of such a neural network? We can either increase the bit width of every element in the matrix, or we can actually create a new way of uh, binarizing the elements, as in I do not binarize the entire matrix in one go. I segment the given matrix. So um, I will de demonstrate how we actually do Hadamard or binarization. So um, just give me a second. We initialize a random real matrix of uh, three by nine, and I binarize it in this function. And you can see that uh, uh, HB grad forward W comma four. Four here is the binarization aggression. That is essentially the number of elements I binarize row wise. So you can see that after binarizing W, I get uh, 0 0.93 as the first four elements of the first row, and so on. And what I can do is I can factorize this into two matrices, one of them binary and the other a full precision matrix. The binary matrix can again be compressed 32 times if you pack it into an unsigned int. And uh, we can uh, compress the full precision matrix four times, or basically what the binarization aggression is. So this is a very adaptable method to actually constrain the network and still kind of preserve its accuracy. And we can aim for you know, high-end GPUs, CPUs, or low-end GPUs, embedded devices, by increasing the binarization aggression to make it more friendly to uh, low-powered hardware. And, but why does this exactly work? So um, since uh, neural networks, uh, the uh, gradient descent is a, you know, it, it has a, long, a lot of uh, directionality involved. 
So the best way to study it, in my opinion, is doing some high dimensional analysis. So what I did was I initialized a random vector of size 64,512. And then I used Hadamard binarization for several binarization aggressions. And once I plotted that for binarization aggression from 2 to about 512, I observed that the angle between the full precision matrix and the Hadamard binarized matrix converges to around 37.5 degrees as the matrix size approaches infinity. So 37 degrees is uh, considered to be pretty small in a very high dimensional space. But as I decrease the binarization aggression, as I go towards maybe four element, binarizing four elements at a time, I observe that the angle comes down to about 25 to 30 degrees. So that is why this method inherently works better than uh, the typical binar vanilla binarization technique, which I discussed in the earlier slide. So um, I, I, I guess I have explained why the forward propagation is uh, you know, efficient. But the back propagation is also an important part of training. And uh, to, to explain why, with this algorithm, back propagation will be pretty efficient, I present the uh, algorithm, basically the equation, which will calculate the gradients through the binarization. And we can see that um, the delta, which is being calculated, is the absolute value of the HB grad forward, which is calculated anyway. So we can just save that and reference that again during back propagation. And uh, while calculating uh, the, gra the gradient, uh, you can see dou C by dou W uh, tilde by uh, times uh, this derivative of the sine function, I can simply use a clipping function because I use a linear estimator from minus one to one for the derivative of the sine function. So this is a very efficient way to back propagate through the network. And uh, we save a lot of uh, memory memory accesses as well as uh, computation time because there's no actual uh, fuse FMA operations that, that are happening unless I, you know, I adjust the bin, bin, binarization aggression to, to my uh, needs. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> let's see. Um, so how do I binarize convolutions? Well, I've, um, I have discussed how I can binarize, uh, f uh, you know, matrix multiplication, but convolutions are a different matter altogether because the kernels are usually of the size three by three or five by five. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know why the convolution uh, GIF is not stabilizing, but you can see that this is essentially how convolution happens. So a kernel slides over the given activations which are coming from the previous layer to calculate the next layer. So to make this more efficient, uh, what I do is I use the IM2 call methodology in the sense that we can transform the image data and the filter data in a given fashion to convert the entire convolution operation to a general matrix multiplication operation. And once I do that, I can again use uh, the binarization methodology of a, of a matrix. And uh, uh, this is the flowchart which actually explains the entire process. Um, the image uses the IM2 call methodology and the weights uses a simple reshape and uh, bin active is the binarization function itself. And once I have binarized the unrolled uh, matrices, I can simply multiply that using my optimized uh, uh, gem kernels. And then I can just reshape that for the output. So um, this, is the, uh, this is essentially how the entire um, uh, network will function, I'm sorry. Uh, but now let's discuss performance. How well does it actually perform in a real world scenario? So I tested this on the MNIST dataset and CIFAR 10 dataset using the Linnet architecture from CAFE and AlexNet inspired network, which has been, uh, this is a follow up work on Matthew Karbarak's work on Binary Connect. And uh, uh, if you are interested, um, I'm sorry, if you're interested, you can look at how the network layout is. And uh, so the results, uh, for binarization, uh, the, the speed up we get is uh, propor proportional to um, one by the binarization accuracy, plus, uh, binarization aggression, plus one by 32. 32 being the bit, uh, the um, data type I choose to, the bit width of the data type I choose to pack this into. So for B is equal to, which is the binarization aggression equal to four, I observe that uh, for MNIST it actually outperforms the full precision uh, network and it also outperforms the XNOR net uh, architecture which is uh, the latest uh, uh, reported um, 
uh, accuracy results from uh, you know, academia. And we also observed that CIFAR 10, the AlexNet inspired architecture for B is equal to four and B is equal to eight, both outperform uh, XNORnet. I was not able to complete the test for B is equal to 16 in time uh, because of the training uh, constraints. And the full precision network, well, it's, it's uh, much better than the XNOR network, but it surely could, we could actually try for B is equal to two, maybe it could outperform the full precision network. Mm. Moving forward. Um, so now let's discuss the high performance kernels which I have attempted to create using C and Intel OpenMP. So GEM is a general matrix multiplication uh, operation. CMMA is the same thing, classic uh, matrix multiplication algorithm. And XHBNN is the general matrix multiply for the Hadamard binary neural network. So um, uh, CMMA has been, uh, CMMA and XHBNN uh, must be noted have been similarly optimized. And uh, obviously, uh, sorry, I'm not able to scroll. MKL is Intel MKL, which has been optimized by several research scientists for decades. And we can see here that um, the y-axis is logarithmic, and uh, CMMA is taking significantly longer than XHBNN for uh, beta or binarization aggression equal to 16. Uh, this is on the order of 10 to 30 times. And uh, for MKL, well, with the best I could do as a student, I have seen that uh, XHBNN actually performs at par or sometimes a bit better than MKL. And uh, uh, I think that uh, concludes the analysis of XHBNN as well as the accuracy benchmarks. And uh, if anyone has any questions regarding this uh, framework or the algorithm, I'll be happy to answer that. Thank you. <laughs>